Hello everyone, I'm Said. In this video, we are going to talk about template method pattern, which is one of the behavioral design pattern. In this video, I'm going to show you how to refactor a code base and leverage this design pattern to your code base and using template method. Template method, usually we can use it when we have uh, several steps that we want to all the implementation follow a set of steps. So basically we have a pipeline of steps that maybe some of the classes can skip one of them or some of them and also they can customize some of those steps so keep in mind template method we can use it when we have a kind of a skeleton of an algorithm that should follow some uh, steps so let's uh, start with the code and let's see how we can refactor our code to use template method here i have a very simple code to use and actually we have an api to making pizza I really like pizza so that I try to show you how to make pizza. Imagine that we have one interface with one method called make pizza. Very simple. In this code, currently we have only margarita pizza type. Based on the requirement, maybe you use this interface and also this implementation type. That's totally okay. But during the time, maybe you have new features maybe you need to change the code need to add another type of pizza for example pepperoni how we can handle this one let me first run the code and then see the steps that we are preparing the pizza for our customers our api is running and actually i'm gonna call it from postman so you can see there is several steps that we are using for making pizza like preparing dough, baking pizza and also because this is the margarita we are adding tomato sauce or basil and because maybe we have kind of conditions in our application that we need to add some extra ingredients to the pizza based on customer requirements. And at the end, we are cutting pizza and serving pizza. So, yay, your pizza is ready to use. Done. The current API is working fine, but maybe there is a new requirements to add pepperoni. Okay, we are going to make pepperoni pizza as well. So what we can do at first glance, maybe you say we can have another implementation type, which is pepperoni pizza, inheriting or implementing the iPizza interface. And we need to put all the implementation or logic in the make pizza method, which is fine. No issue with that. But if you want to do some, you know, beautiful stuff in your code base maybe you are thinking about we have some set of steps here almost all pizza needs a do almost for all the pizza you need to baking pizza and also cutting pizza and serving pizza right this is a kind of a steps that you need to have it for all of the pizza types so uh, what we can do let's see First of all, I'm going to create some methods here just to, you know, breaking these methods because in the real time, if you have real logic, maybe you have a big method here, then it's better to split it. So first step is, for example, this one is prepare do. And second one is baking. Just bear with me. I'm going to prepare this method and then reuse it later. So this one is baking, this one actually using for add toppings, toppings. And here we can call it for add extra ingredients. And this one is for cutting. The last one as well is serving. So we have several steps right for example this is the step one two three four five six right template method is used when you have several steps and then most of the implementation types should follow the same steps some of them may be ignored or customized but usually this is the skeleton of your method so this is the best place to use the template method because template method exactly coming for this kind of purposes 
So we have uh, making pizza, but the margarita and also the pepperoni, which is later on we are going to implement that, we need to have a base class that sharing this kind of methods, right? I'm gonna create an abstract class here. We're gonna call it pizza base. Usually better to use the abstract class because as I mentioned, some of classes needs to be modified or customized or ignored, right? We need to override those methods. So the best one is abstract class. Let's just accept this copilot suggestion. We have the make pizza method. It's already added all the methods here. So let's just copy the method implementation and put it here. This one actually we can call it template method, right? Usually in the most of content on internet, I've seen that they put these steps in the constructor method, which is not a good place because you cannot use this kind of async task in the constructor, right? So better to have a different method and put your logic for the template method there, like the make pizza here. Here we need to make all of this modifier to protect it as we want to all of classes that inherit from this base can override our methods. Okay, protected. We need to think about the steps. Some of the steps are common for all of the pizza type, like preparing, like baking, like cutting and serving, right? We're going to keep these methods in this base class because they are common and all of the pizzas needs to follow these steps, right? But for example, these two steps should implement by concrete classes like margarita or pepperoni. So here I'm going to just add abstract, then I want to remove it. You know that in the abstract class, when you abstract a method, all the concrete class have to implement this specific methods because this is different for each type and also for this one as well. But we can do, okay, let's do this one. We can do a little better things like task that completed. Why this one? Because this is extra ingredients. If some of pizza needs to have the extra ingredients, that's fine. They can override it. That's why we put virtual one. So we have a base implementation, which is nothing here. But every classes like pepperoni, we're going to put, I don't know, more cheese. They can override and put the custom implementation there. Here as well, we don't need this statics. We're gonna implement these methods as well. So we have a pizza base class. We can actually implement the I pizza here as well, but I like to put that in each class specifically. So for margarita, we can say, for example, pizza base. Because we have a making pizza method in the base one, we can actually remove the class here, right? Also serving, we have it already in the base, cutting. For margarita, we are saying that no need to add extra ingredient here. So we can just remove this one as well. Let it be empty in the base class. And also we need toppings and baking and prepare do is the same one, right? Also, this one should be protected. Why this one is complaining? Let's just see what is the problem here. Okay, override it, right. We need to override that class as well because we made it abstract there. And simply we can say async, nice. So this is the new implementation of Margarita. All those methods, all those complexity are gone in the base class. What is the difference for the margarita pizza? It contains the tomato sauce, mozzarella, and then basil, right? Now we have this flexibility to add more classes and more pizza types to our application. Usually we already refactor this code to using the template method. Now we are ready to add more types. We kind of can say that our application is now flexible and pluginable, right? So we can put all of different pizza types easily. Let's go for pepperoni class. 
we are going to add, for example, pepperoni. What we can do here, we can say, thank you for Copilot. Here, all we need to do is overwriting the add toppings because all those steps are the same. But the point here is our requirement is for adding extra ingredient here, for example, right? So we're gonna implement or override extra ingredient as well. That's it. You see, all we need to add the new type here is just that, right? We just implement the pepperoni pizza as well. Let's put this one as well. The, another question is, okay, we already add these classes here. How about the API? Because the current API is only contains the pizza and then we have iPizza here, one pizza interface, but now we have two different implementation. How we can handle this one? Easily. Let's go. Here, I'm gonna add one enumeration called pizza type. This should be enum. Usually I like to add none always in my enumeration. It's, I think, better to have it. So now we have two pizza type and we're gonna put this type as a API parameter because customer needs to tell us as a backend or, you know, in the kitchen, what type of pizza we need. In the API, I'm gonna add a type and I need to say, I want to get pizza type from road. Our API getting type from incoming request, but there is another problem that, okay, we have the type, but here we have two different implementation type of the pizza interface. So what we can do here, actually we can use the benefits of, so usually we have this add a scope. We can say, I don't know, you use already the key scoped or not, which is really helpful here. I think .NET 8 is added for the key dependency injection. You can have key scope, transient, and also singleton. It's exactly came for this reason. When you have one interface and different implementation type, you can manage your interface to get one implementation at a time. So we can say, Pizza type, this is for margarita, and also we can say pepperoni, and this implementation type is pepperoni pizza. Nice. What we can do next, here again, this is the pizza type, right? So I'm gonna use I service factory here, I service scope factory then we can say scope factory because when api gets called we need to know based on the type what kind of implementation we need so i'm gonna create a scope and also yes that's okay we need to say get required kit service this is new apis that added in .NET 8 for kit services we're gonna, based on the type, get the pizza implementation and then simply just call make pizza. I think we are good to go for having better things here. I'm gonna add the pizza type here to see what kind of implementation are calling. We can say protected pizza type. By default, we're gonna call it none, okay? So let's just put another lock here, right line making okay nice and then yes thank you very much we have the pizza type in base class so simply we just need to say override yeah we can say override and the point here is we need to make property as a virtual here okay and we're gonna have the same one for margarita pizza as well, which is margarita. Nice. That's it, I think. Let's uh, run the project. If everything goes well, we can see the result and logs on the console. Okay. So now we need to put the pizza type in our API. So I'm gonna just copy, for example, margarita here. 
Okay, let's see where is the log. Okay, nice. So we can see here the first uh, log, as in the, the base one, is making a margarita pizza, preparing dough, baking the pizza, tomato, basil, serving, cutting, and the margarita pizza is ready. Very nice. So let's go for pepperoni because for pepperoni we have one extra step as well which was the extra ingredient. Let's see. Nice. So you can see that we have add toppings for the pepperoni and also add extra ingredient like uh, the onion mushrooms for the pepperoni. By this way, by using template method, we could manage our implementation type to follow set of steps. This is only about the pizza type, but we can use this template method for your application as well. I mean, if you check the code, you have the common methods, common steps for a few implementation. So why not just put it in a template method and follow template pattern as well? Maybe the question is when we should not use the template method here. I would say if your steps, so for example, you, you say, okay, I have some steps in our code. Do I need to use the template method? If those steps are entangled together, maybe it's not a good choice for using the template method because you need to put some conditions. For example, if this is the type, go for this way. If this is not, go for that way. So this kind of conditions, just making your code more complex. So better to not use the template method. Another maybe a downside is using more abstractions. Maybe you have different layer of abstractions in your application. So putting and using the template method cause to have another layer of abstraction. So maybe this is another downside. Some developers don't need to put lots of abstraction as I don't like to use the many abstraction as well. But if you're going to use your application more flexible, I think template method is the way to go. That's it for the template method. Please make sure you're subscribed to my channel and give me some feedbacks in the comments. You use the template method in your application or not? How do you gonna organize your methods? Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Bye.